morning. Welcome to A Day in the Life with Two Ragdoll Cats. I've got a very opinionated Rory on my hands this morning. I thought I would just share kind of little snippets of our routine and also do a bit of a Q&A somewhere mixed in the middle because I've got so many questions from you guys and I just want to make sure that I can answer them and give the best advice that I can with the knowledge that I've got. I've got both boys here now and we've started our morning, pretty much just woke up, come downstairs and now you can hear Rory whinging in the background because he's desperate to go outside so that's our first thing that we do in the morning. I think it helps them to just, I don't know, get some fresh air, get some of their energy out and then they come back in and have breakfast but first things first, let's take them outside. Do you want to go outside? Are you ready? Come on then. What's going on here? One second, we're in a tangle. Ready? Can we head in? Come on, do it properly. <laughs> Come on. Are you ready, Rory? Put your head in then. There we go, good job. There you go. Are you happy now? Echo likes to play hard to get in the morning so I'll just usually sit under here until I'm not looking and then he'll try and run out of the door. <laughs> and chicken? Yeah. Rory managed to catch a bird the other day. Um, he didn't kill it, he just caught it and then let it go, but ever since then he's been obsessed with sitting under this hydrangea. <laughs> now what he thinks he's seen now. What are they up to? You don't want to go in there. You don't want to go in there. You want to go in there? Go on then. Oh, you are stubborn. It's closed then. So I usually stand just in the kitchen doing the pots and things and I can see the cats in the garden. <laughs> Echo's just ran in because the bin men are here but Rory is looking very intrigued. <laughs> I think he's gonna run in. He's so brave. Oh. No, nope, he's not fussed, is he? <laughs> this bush is his safe place outside. He always goes out there when he doesn't feel safe at all out there and that's the only place he goes. Other than that, he comes back inside. Echo, however, you don't put up with any of it, do you? <laughs> Are you all right in there, chicken? Hey? Are you okay? <laughs> it's safe now. Are you gonna get me? Yay! <laughs> Come on then, let's go inside. Come on, Ecky leg. -like. That way. Turn around. Beep, beep, beep. Good job. Every morning this happens, Echo chases his lead, he usually grabs it and runs off with it. Yep, there we go. <laughs> See you later then. See ya. So I've just got these leads to put away. And <laughs> Rory always goes and sits just here very politely, like, can we have some food please mummy? Of course you can darling. Who said we had cats like having a dog? So I always wash these because it's like us eating off a dirty plate and I think that that is gross. Let's give these a clean. Echo usually takes a bit of convincing in the morning. And usually when there's a hole like this in the bowl, they won't eat any more biscuits. So I'll need to fill that back up. <laughs> yes, they are princesses. And I wouldn't have it any other way. 
So that's them having breakfast. We just use uh, Sheba food, so the poultry one, they won't eat any other. <laughs> and they've been eating this for a while, so touch wood. <laughs> this isn't wood, but anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, they were really fussy for a while and it was hard to find any food they would eat, but this one, they are enjoying. What's the matter? Rory? Come here. Come here. Do you want a stroke? Good boy. Good job. Come here. Stop being silly. You couldn't get much further away. <laughs> what do you want? Do you want to show me? Show me then. <laughs> Don't fall over. Come on then. Do you want some more food by any chance? Do you want some more food? This one's this what you want. Yeah? <laughs> Rory is the piggy of the two, aren't you? Yes, you are. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to touch you. We'll carry on. Echo loves to be touched while he's eating. Rory hates it. Just like humans, every day they are different. Today Echo's tired, so usually Echo comes from outside and has a really crazy run around the house. Excuse the washing machine, it's a busy day. He's upstairs asleep in the sun, so I cannot blame him. It's a lovely day. It's not too hot today. I would film on a hot day, but they do nothing all day. Um, Rory just gets really, really grumpy and unhappy because he gets overtired and Echo just sleeps like an old man all day long. So Rory's eating his second breakfast now. Once he's finished that, we'll probably play. I used to try and play with him first, but he is a strong world and he'll do what he wants to do. <laughs> so <laughs> we play after food. I don't know how he wants to do that. I don't know how he doesn't get indigestion, but as long as he's happy, I'm happy. But I like to burn off some energy for him and then he has a good long sleep. Um, and that's pretty much our mornings, so here he is. Trouble himself. Why do you always look like you're up to no good? <laughs> hey? Are you hiding? This is my life. I just have conversations with Rory. Don't I? Yeah. Do you want some more strokes? You're in a fussy mood today. Oh, it's lovely. Oh, it's so lovely. Look at that fluffy bum. Oh, good job. <laughs> so this is Rory's all-time favourite toy. It's had better days. Look at the state of it. It used to have loads of feathers and it <laughs> used to have these ball things that came off the end and it attached to the string. Now we've just tied it. We really need to get another one, but he loves this so much. And it used to be on a fishing wire and of course Rory bit through that so we, we've now just attached it with some string but I think these kind of toys are the best kind of toys because they just live various lives um, but it always gets him going because he loves to hunt. Ah oh, forward roll! <laughs> Good job! Good job! Oh! <laughs> Not sure how you feel about that are you? Oh, he's a got uh, the monk on today. Oh, where's it going? We have a very rare occurrence here. We have a Rory purring. <laughs> oh, go on then. He started purring more and more often recently. He went through a phase of just being really hard to please. And now he just wakes up and then the first thing he does is comes to find me, shouts at me, and then he likes to have fusses. Listen to this happy boy. Good boy. <laughs> he still naps much shorter than Echo. Echo is still fast asleep upstairs. <laughs> I think they just had about an hour and a half's power nap. Ah, now you're back, aren't you? Hey? Oh, wow. That's a big one. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. You're wondering why I've got changed again. 
it's because I went out of the house and there's no way you're ever going to make me relax in the house with jeans on. Hey, would you wear jeans? No. I thought I would chat to you guys a little bit about their grooming routine. I've got Rory here looking very concerned <laughs> about what's coming next. So their favourite brush of all time is this one. It's from Pets at Home called The Groom Room. I love that it was bamboo and it's got little plastic bobbles on so it's not too scratchy for them. So that's the first brush. I always use that every single day. I follow it up with Echo usually with this dog comb, which sounds bizarre, but he is super, super fluffy. And this just gets rid of any flyaways. Rory doesn't, he's not as fluffy as Echo yet. They have completely different coats. Uh, Rory's is like cotton wool, it's so soft. And Echo's has gone much denser. It's still soft though. <laughs> so yes, that's the comb that I use for that. And then we've just got some extra brushes here. This one I basically never use. Um, there's a lot of controversy about the Furminator. If there is ever any knots, which there usually isn't, or in winter, um, is it winter? I think it's winter. There's a time of year where they get super fluffy and I can't keep up. So I will tend to use this on them then. Um, it does cut the fur, so it's not ideal to use. But if you are struggling with fur, then that is a good thing. And then these two I don't use very often. This one is the same as this brush, but it doesn't have any uh, balls on the end. The cats don't like it. And personally, I do think it's good, but I don't like the fact that it's so scratchy, like it's not nice, it doesn't feel nice, so I don't recommend this one. This one was from the same brand. These are recommended by Echo's Breeder. This one's really good, um, these little things move, so yeah, it does kind of get really in there. So they're the brushes that I recommend. Um, I was going to show you the nail tool tools that I use, but someone seems to have sat on them. There we go. <laughs> I will show you guys how I clip the nails. It's only the same as us chopping off the white bit. Oops, there we go. The white bit of our nails, so it causes no harm. It's not uncomfortable for them at all. 
with house cats it's important to do it because they don't have as much access to different types of terrain and they have scratching posts but it depends on the cat if they use it a lot so Rory doesn't use it as much as Echo does and so his claws get super long and it just means that when they run around and they jump and do parkour on my furniture it doesn't scratch or <laughs> do anything to them. If you have outdoor cats that you let out without supervision do not trim their nails because obviously their claws are there for protection so they can attack so without their claws they can't really protect themselves so yes anyway I'll show you how to do this now got my handy little assistant here Echo does not mind having this done at all so with Echo it's different to with Rory um which one shall I do try with this one there we go <laughs> okay so you just want to get where the bean is and you just gently squeeze I don't know if you can see that and it pops the claw out so like that his aren't even that bad so Let's see. Eggy leggy. <laughs> so as you can see, there's no sharp bits on Echoes. I could take a little bit off there, but I'm probably not gonna bother. Um, so this one, that's a sharp claw. So all you do is you get these and you pop them sideways on the claw like that, and you just trim the very end off. It's really important. <laughs> You're licking me. There is this like pink bit here. If you cut that, they'll bleed. It's only like if you cut the pink bit of your nail. So yeah, it's just important to be careful and to not take too much off. You know, you can always come back. <laughs> and don't forget as well, <laughs> Echo, <laughs> come here. And don't forget as well that they've got a thumb claw. This one usually gets quite long. So it's just on that side there. I don't know if I'm doing a very good job of explaining this. That one's the hardest one to get to. So I just have a look and see. Um, we can try and look at Rory's, but I don't think he's gonna let me. Let's see. I usually have to get Rory when he's very, very sleepy. Echo loves having his feet touched. Does anyone else's cat do this? Look at this little creep. <laughs> hey little toe spreader. Good boy. Good job. <laughs> so that was Echo. Um, I don't know if Rory's gonna let me, but we can give it a go. Now I know you don't like having this done, but you need it doing. Because yours gets so long. Good job. Done. I'll try and show you on Rory's because his is super long. When I push there, you can see how long his claw is, and you can see very, very faintly <laughs> it's too much fluff the pink part. So, you would literally take the very end off there. You are being so patient. Are you. Are you ready? I know you hate it, don't you? I know. Well done. That was so good. Okay. I always like to give them a treat when they've been good boys. That's one for you. And one for you, good sir. There you go. Rory did so much better that time and I think it's because we've done it quite a lot now and each time I give him a treat but maybe it was the mood he was in but sometimes he's such a wiggle bum. While we're on the topic of treats I'll show you what I give them. So I recently popped all their treats into this old container just because it was easier but I used to give them Thrive. I still love Thrive, I think it's great, it's just very, <laughs> very, very expensive and they eat it like you don't even know. So I swapped over to these which I can get from Tesco. I probably should price it up because these are probably more expensive in the long run but they're a couple of pounds for a packet and I just add them onto the weekly shop. So these ones, <laughs> these are from Morrison's. They absolutely love these. And then these ones are from Tesco. Um, just dried fish treats. They love fish. Um, and then I just pop them in here so as you can see they look different so the ones from Tesco I actually really like because they are literally like pieces of dried fish 
<laughs> I don't know if you could see Echo then. <laughs> Let's see. What? Do you want one? Can I have a paw? Thank you. There you go. Haven't been as good at teaching Rory tricks, but we have got one down. He always goes to his ball when he wants a treat. Can you sit? And can you come up? Good job, darling. <laughs> well done. We also use Dental Life, so they're not as fussed about these, but they will eat them. These are good for their teeth, so I don't actually brush their teeth. I probably should, but I just don't even know how to start with that. So I like to give them these every now and then just because they crunch them and it just helps to get some of the plaque off. I had a lot of you guys asking about the water filter and asking for an update. Love it. It's amazing. It's got this sensor, so it's only on when we walk past and then as soon as we go away from it, it stops. It's ceramic, so it's super easy to clean and the filter is like one that you can just clean. You don't have to keep buying new filters and the cats love it. So yeah, they've got three different options and as you can see, it like has this little water fountainy bit. So Rory loves to drink from there. Echo loves to drink from this one. Rory first off started putting his head in here and he got absolutely soaked. <laughs> but we have learned. So yeah, as soon as you walk away from it, it stops, which is just amazing. So I thought I would end this video with a Q and A. I was hoping Rory was gonna stay there, but nope, he doesn't feel like it today. They are on high alert this afternoon. <laughs> So I asked you on Instagram to just ask me anything that you wanted to know about the cats so that I could give you guys some advice. I'll just find it now and then we will go through some of these because some of my answers might have changed from the past because I've had my boys now for over a year. We've had... <laughs> Echo will have had for two years in November and Rory we've had a year in June so yeah crazy crazy times. I can't believe how fast time has gone. <laughs> So, someone asked about hot weather care, um, I really struggle with them when it's hot. Echo is quite good and he likes to just go and, you know, lay down. Rory doesn't quite understand that he can't play in the middle of the day, so we do struggle a little bit with that and he gets very grumpy. Um, he is super playful still, like, I felt like Echo had grown out of the kitten stage at this point, but Rory is still fully, fully in it. What I would say is to put ice cubes in their water just to keep their water nice and cool. Um, feed them wet food, you know, instead of dry so that they stay hydrated. Sometimes cats can struggle to stay hydrated, especially when it's hot. Don't let them outside in the middle of the day if you do let them go outside. Um, have fans and see if they like fans. I sometimes think the air circulating does help to keep the house cooler. And if you really struggle with them, then, you know, wet blankets, just putting them on them for a few minutes and then taking them off again, otherwise they'll get warm, <laughs> works. And you can also get cool mats. Um, if you've got a tile floor as well, then you'll find that they tend to gravitate towards the coolest places. If they start panting, don't panic about it. It's just their way of cooling down like we sweat. So hopefully that helps some of you. Um, Really, you know, they will be okay. <laughs> it's just about keeping your house as cool as you possibly can and also keeping it safe as well. You can't see Echo, but it's just down here. Someone asked about harness training. Um, <laughs> when they stopped being... <laughs> I won't say it, they're French. When they stopped being a nightmare, um, my eight-month-old ragdoll is a demon. That's so funny. I would say Rory is still a demon. Um, he is mellowing out as the time goes by but he is still an absolute chaotic bundle of energy and um, with harness training from pretty much like a month after we got Echo and Rory we started to put them in a harness we just got a kitten harness from pets at home got them used to it and um, you tend to find that when they're distracted they're fine in it and when they're just in the house in a harness they're so melodramatic and they'll roll around on the floor the most important thing is that it's not too small and it's not too tight under their arms because if it is they just do that flop thing <laughs> both cats have done that in the past but yeah just taking it slow um, yeah, and not expecting too much from them at first, you know. I tend to find treats work, so there's a channel on here called Cat School and they have some amazing tips and tricks on there for getting your cat more comfortable and it involves putting treats a little bit further away each time so you can kind of tempt them out into the garden that way but also understanding that some cats just don't like to be outside and that's fine as well. The best thing that we did for our cats was when we went away we put them in a cattery and it was an outdoor cattery, which a lot of catteries are these days. And so there was a lot of noises. I was quite worried for them because any tiny noise outside, they would just run straight back inside. But since they've been to the cattery, no noises affect them anymore, which is amazing. Certain things like the bin lorry that's really, really loud, or, you know, if suddenly one of the neighbors just starts shouting really loud, or I don't know, 
just anything like that that's kind of like random, that'll set them off. But things like people just wheeling their bins down the driveway, next door have pebbles on their drive, so if they would walk on them, Echo would be like, no way. <laughs> so they've got better. Um, I just think it takes time and it also takes experience and then being worried and being scared and then going back out and facing their fear. A bit like with humans as well. How do you find the strength to entertain them? I feel guilty because I'm tired and don't do it every day. I think it's personal preference, isn't it? You are gonna get a cuddle from me. <laughs> I think it's personal preference. I personally love playing with them. There are days when I'm more tired and that's why I have certain toys that have, you know, big long sticks, which mean I can play with them from a sofa or from bed and I don't have to be as involved. But I just, I do love playing with them. But having lots of stimulating toys and rotating them like you would with a child. So we've got this big tube. I haven't had this out for about three months and Echo is like, yes mum. He absolutely loves it, but then they get bored of it and they stop playing with it, so then I put it away. Then when I bring it out again, it's like a brand new toy. So just having interactive toys and toys they can play with on days when you're not feeling like it as much. Um, but knowing that if they start to develop naughty behaviours like scratching things, peeing in places they shouldn't be, what else can they do? Biting, shouting a lot. <laughs> Sometimes that can be boredom and craving that attention, so don't get angry at them because you've not given them that attention. It's kind of like a, a circular thing and something that you just have to figure out as you go on with life. Difference in personality, well, you can tell, I feel like, just from the videos that I post. Echo is very chill, very mellow, but also he's got super playful in his old age. <laughs> he loves this tube, he's just gone to sleep in it. Um, Rory is very, very cuddly when he wants to be. He's super soft, super lovely. He's so adorable, but he's also a bit naughty and his <laughs> strong willed will give him that one. And he's a very hungry cat as well. Um, so I think they balance each other well, you know, because Echo is super playful and Rory loves to play, but he plays to kill, <laughs> whereas Echo plays for fun. So that's the kind of difference, but they love each other and they have such a good time. It has been challenging bringing Rory into our life because he is so so different from Echo and he needs so much more attention and time but it does just take time and it's about knowing that cats just have their own personalities and they know what they want to do. I would not be without either of them. I love them to bits and I think that they make each other happy, they make me happy. You know what, what we've not got from one we've got from the other and I think that that's just such a nice thing and the fact they can snuggle and when I'm out of the house I know that they've got each other just makes me so happy. My two kitty brothers like to eat indoor plants. Any advice? Ooh, Echo and this bush, oh my god, they were in a love affair when I first brought Echo home. Echo loves to eat grass so when I take him outside he's like a lawnmower, that's what we call him. Since we started taking him outside more, he gets his daily quota of grass, he no longer eats bushy or any other plants for that matter. Rory has never been interested, other than if he's been a bit of a tinker and he's, you know, attention seeking and he like tries to run through the bush. Uh, other than that he doesn't bother. So what I would say is try cat grass because it might be that they're wanting certain nutrients that they're not getting from their food because that's what we found with Echo um, and him having access to cat grass has just meant that he's just not interested in flowers anymore. How to train them and do they understand the word no? I have a ragdoll kitten. They do know the word no because I say it very sternly when I mean it and um, I'll do things like point at the same time so I think it's just important to be consistent and also to be strong with what you're doing to be like no and to say like naughty boy I always say that naughty boy <laughs> um, but it takes time you know it takes time to understand it and Rory will always backtrack me it's usually Rory that's been naughty <laughs> and he'll be like Meh! and I'm like no stop it and he usually does so yeah, it just takes time, but I do think they learn um, and they associate things more with good treats. So when they're good, give them treats. Um, when they're bad, just say no and ignore them. And that tends to work. And just treat them like children, you know. Don't think that it's the end of the world if your cat's been naughty. Just distract them like you would with a child. You know, get toys out, play with them. Divert their attention away from the thing that they were doing to get your attention in the first place. I hope that makes sense. Their cutest and funniest quirks. Let me think. I know Rory's first off is his absolutely bizarre meows that he does. I don't know if I've ever properly captured them on video, but they are wild. I was going to do one then, but I'm not going to embarrass myself like that. But he has these calls that I have never heard before, and there are certain ones he does at certain times of day, and they mean different things. <laughs> but yeah, he's the most chatty cat that I know. 
Um, <laughs> he also loves to, when you're brushing him, he likes to lick, so you get a bath at the same time as he does. With Echo, he loves to play hide and seek. He absolutely loves a game of hide and seek and he loves to be chased. I do think Echo is more like a dog than a cat. <laughs> and he also, um, he likes to take toys away and he sometimes puts them in his water bowl as well. So they're probably the cutest things. In fact, there's one more thing. There's this roll of electrical tape that Dom has had in the spare room for like a year. It's just been on the floor. So <laughs> the last few weeks, every morning, Echo brings it out of that room and just puts it in the bathroom. <laughs> so I don't know what that's all about, but each to their own. <laughs> Do you brush their teeth and if so what do you use? I do have a toothbrush and this really disgusting cheese toothpaste. I tried it with Echo when he was a kitten and I just I just didn't just the you know I just didn't like it. I've took them for checkups and the vet said their teeth are fine so I think some people do brush their cat's teeth. I personally wouldn't even know where to start so I can't give any advice on that. Toys they loved and that lasted a long time so I will show you guys. I've got a few here. So Echo loves this. It used to be a spring with this coating around it. We took the spring out of it and he loves it so much. Let's see if I can get him to play with it. His little ears have perked up. So you saw earlier he was like playing with it on the rug and it, I think it's because it's like quite flexible and it moves around and he loves it. Echo also really loves these tubes and um, he likes to like bite them and run around the house with them and he plays with them a lot on the stairs. We also have this pheasant feather which I found outside. You're not supposed to leave cats unattended with feathers because they can't actually digest the feather I think. Um, but they love this. So for a while they were playing with this non-stop. They loved the smell of it. Um, I think their natural instinct kicks in with things like that. So that is, yeah, their favourite toys. And I'll just get the last ones. Echo is like super intrigued. We also have these ones. So, oh, they are in a mess. Ah, both of these are absolutely destroyed by the cats. But Echo loves this one. He loves anything that's long and like slinky. So again, destroyed, it's been tied back on. But he loves this and Rory's favorite toy is this one, which I showed you guys earlier with the feather. Um, Where's the other one? Let me see, I feel like it was somewhere. Oh, it's there. Rory suddenly got an interest in this mouse toy as well, which is like a stuff in free one because he's an absolute terror and he will shred his toys to bits and it's no good for them to be in plastic stuff in. Um, I was sat the other day just minding my own business. Rory went over to the toy basket, tipped it over to get this out. So yeah, he's been on a love affair with it since then. <laughs> so that's their favorite toys right now, but it's forever changing. I will leave down below all of the toys that I recommend with links for you guys to give you a head start if you are thinking of getting your own cat or wanting some new toys for them. How their behavior changed from kitten to cat. So it does change, you know, it does change over time. When they're a kitten, they tend to do lots of naps and they're also super hyper and crazy. As they get older, they start to mellow out. So Echo is kind of at that stage now. <laughs> when he's awake, he's super playful, but he sleeps quite a lot of the day. If it's a super hot day, he will sleep all day. And if it's a cooler day, you know, then they have like this kind of routine that they've got going on. Um, Rory is quite restless at the minute and I don't know if it's just him changing over from being a kitten to an adult but um, he does you know he has a routine I feel like we have a routine that we've got they know what they want and they like to get what they expect <laughs> um, but yeah they have changed a lot since they were a kitten and I think that they're less high maintenance now especially Echo like he's just super chill and easy Rory's getting there slowly but surely with Rory how they do outside they do great Honestly, we've had certain times with, um, mostly with Rory, trying to jump onto the fence. Uh, that was a really short-lived thing and we corrected that by spraying him with water every, tried to do, every time he tried to do it, which sounds cruel, but it doesn't cause him any harm and it just causes that shock. And it's that negative reinforcement followed by positive reinforcement that he didn't do the naughty thing. And since then we've had no issues. Um, as I said earlier, he caught a bird the other day, so any birds that end up on the ground, Rory's like, Whew straight after them. I trust them both 100% outside, you know, um, I like them on the lead because I can see where the lead is in the grass and I know exactly where they are. When they're outside they just like to chill, you know, when we first started taking both of them outside they were just doing like this crazy map of the entire garden and they would just be non-stop. Now that they've settled back in they're just fine, you know, they just go out, they just lay down, they just enjoy smelling and Echo just loves being a lawnmower out there. <laughs> 
Do they get crazy running around with no reason with funny voices? Yes, they get the poomies, that's what we call it. So, um, oh. <laughs> When we've been outside they tend to come back in and they're full of beans running around like crazy cats. They go upstairs and they sound like a herd of horses like running around. They do have those moments and like I said before Rory has the most bizarre meows I've ever heard. <laughs> uh, do they share one litter tray? We have two but they share both. And they'll tend to go at the same time as well so I mean you just can't make it up with cats. They say um, for every cat get another litter tray and I think it's actually recommended to have three litter trays with two cats but I could not keep up with that. So we have one in the kitchen and one in the bathroom and yeah whatever floor they're on is the toilet that they go to and they have no problem but because they're outside quite a bit they tend to go outside as well. Do they ruin your furniture and how can you make sure your kitchen counter is sanitary? Um, I wouldn't say they ruin my furniture, I wouldn't say my furniture is top notch quality compared to before we had them. They have their moments um, with the puff, I don't know what you guys would call it, the extra bit of the sofa, yeah I would say that is quite destroyed. We called it cagged, that's what we would call it, like when their claws kind of pull the material. Just from them playing and like Rory loves to like run and jump and do like backflips off it. So when his claws are a bit longer it does catch and I really don't care. We've not really ever touched wood had any issues with them scratching furniture properly from time to time Echo will have a go on this arm he soon gets torn off for that but we have um, quite a lot of scratching posts we have them on every floor all two floors <laughs> but we also have them in multiple rooms so they have options of where they want to scratch if they want to scratch but yeah overall I'm pretty happy we had an issue with Rory scratching the rug at some points but again it's just an attention seeking behavior we corrected it again with spraying water and he knows now that he's not to do it and we just distract him from doing it and do something else um, but other than that they're absolutely fine so I think it does start with the breeder so the breeder teaching them the the right way, I feel like, does help and them having access to scratching posts definitely helps as well. But it is just natural instinct, so if they don't have access to it, then they're just going to keep finding somewhere else to do it. Um, last few questions now. Do you bathe them and how often do you clean their teeth? There is a lot of teeth questions here. <laughs> I do not bathe them unless... For any reason they have diarrhea or constipation and they have any problems down there you know but they don't enjoy it they find it quite traumatic as do i and i just don't it's not a nice process so i don't bathe them some people do if you are going to bathe your kittens or your cats do it from when they are tiny because then they'll get used to it echo is pretty relaxed about it so you know he doesn't like it he'll tend to dig his claws right in my shoulder but he stays very quiet um, <laughs> And he lets me hair dry him after. Rory literally shouts and screams like I've set him on fire. Uh, but we get there in the end and he will not let me hair dry him. So each to their own, you know. I'm so sure some cats would love it. I feel like if I filled the bath with hot water and got some of those fish toys, the cats would go in and love it. They're super intrigued by water, but they also hate it. They were out in the rain earlier and Rory was meowing like he was on fire. <laughs> I was just like, come inside then. <laughs> Um, I think that's it. I think that's all of the questions. I have talked about food in the past, so I will link those videos down below. I hope that you found this video helpful. I'm sorry it was a bit rambly here at the end, but I do like to give space to answer your guys' questions because I get so many questions all the time about ragdolls. They are a completely different type of cat to any cat I've ever had. I would say they are high maintenance because they are but maybe that's because I've let them become high maintenance I'm not sure but I enjoy everything I do with them and I enjoy sharing them with you guys and I hope that you know you enjoy these videos and so many of you say you watch my videos and you've got ragdolls too so it's like this really cute community that we've got um, I hope that you learned something from this video or found it helpful I, that's all I ever want for you guys. If you want to see more videos from my cats then I will leave playlists down below. I've got playlists from when they were both tiny kittens up to now so you can see the whole journey, all the progressions <laughs> that we've been through together because it's been a wild ride. Um, I couldn't imagine life without them and I love them to pieces, absolutely do. They are my entire life. Love them so much. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. I will be sure to do a proper day in the life of the cats at some point but I felt like today I should just include this Q&A instead but I hope you all have an amazing rest of your day and I'll see you all in the next video bye guys straight after I finished filming Rory went and got in and now they're just having a little room in session <laughs> yeah I'm talking about you too <laughs> Echo what is that face <laughs>
Oh, silly boys. Mm -hmm.